Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwann, and today I'd like to share with you the secrets to using affirmations. Let me begin with a quick history lesson, a reminder. In the 1920s, a French pharmacist named Emile Coué wrote a book called Self-Mastery Through Conscious Autosuggestion. He believed that the human mind has the capacity to heal itself. And his magic words were, every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. He told his customers that came to him to fill their doctor's prescriptions and repeat those words 20 times in the morning and 20 times at night. And soon the word spread that Kuei's magic formula proved to be more powerful than medicine. Kuei reasoned that the human imagination was far more powerful than logic. He said, Imagine if we place a 30-foot wooden plank that is 10 inches wide on the floor, and chances are that everyone will be able to walk on that, that plank from one end to the other without stepping off. Now, change the conditions of this experiment and suppose that this plank is placed between two tall buildings about 30 stories high. How many people would walk across that 30-foot plank? Probably zero. Why? Because people imagine falling to their death. In the first case, you imagine it's easy. In the second case, you imagine it is impossible. Create and reason that if we can fill the mind with positive suggestions, it will silence the logic and activate the imagination and stimulate the body's power to heal itself. The auto-suggestion every day in every way and getting better and better worked so well because it stimulated the imagination. People would fill in the blanks and imagine what better and better would look like. What would it feel like? So Kuei's ideas of using the mind to heal the body it goes back 2,000 years to Epidaurus, the Greek town where physicians first learned how to harmoniously heal the mind, body, and soul. And you assume back 3,000 years ago, Hindus and Buddhists discovered that chanting mantras promotes healing. The mantra connects you with the unconscious and it assists the body in healing itself. It's interesting that the word mantra Man and tra means to think and to liberate, meaning that this will free one's mind from thought. So here's the overarching idea. You have a choice on how you use your mind. You can let it operate in automatic mode and empower your automatic thoughts to rule your mental state. You know, in this state, your mind will operate at minimum levels of efficiency. Or you can use positive affirmations to create a happy and productive state of mind that will lead you to peak performance. Earl Nightingale was the dean of motivation. He wrote a book called The Strangest Secret. And millions of salespeople listened to his core message. We become what we think about. And a key idea was that if you paid more attention to your thoughts, and if you were able to steer your thoughts in a more positive direction, you'd feel better, you'd feel happier, and you'd become more successful. Now, let's discuss seven practical steps that you can take to make positive affirmations work for you so you can make incremental improvements in your performance day after day. Number one, describe your affirmations in a positive way and avoid negative descriptions. For example, if you say, I will not get nervous when I hear a custom objection, your subconscious mind will process the message, get nervous, and that could negatively impact your performance. You could reframe the affirmations and say, Every time I hear a custom objection, I welcome the opportunity to confidently address the real question that's hiding behind the objection. Number two, 
use the present tense. Don't say, I will get better and better at listening to my customers. Say instead, I enjoy staying in the present moment and I enjoy listening closely to my customers. Number three, stay grounded in reality. Don't lie and or affirm an unrealistic fantasy. For example, when you say, when I visualize my customers taking ownership of my prod product or service, the sale is a practical foregone conclusion. That's not an affirmation, that's self-deception. So be honest about the affirmation. Number four, act as if you have already achieved the desired outcome. But most salespeople do a post-mortem analysis of a sales call. You can reverse the process and do a pre-mortem before the call. Imagine three things that could go wrong. Then prepare yourself for overcoming each scenario successfully and visualize the outcome in great detail. Then use the following affirmation. I'm well prepared for this call and I'm confident in my ability to handle any challenge that may come my way. This affirmation will boost your confidence and your chances for winning the sale. Number five, use positive affirmations when you are in a tight spot. Let's say things take an unexpected turn in the conversation and you don't want to allow automatic negative thoughts like, this looks bad. Um, this is going to turn into a disaster. You don't want that to cloud your judgment. Use this emergency affirmation instead. This is inconvenient and I will find a way to resolve that issue. Number six, test and improve the effectiveness of your affirmation. If an affirmation doesn't feel right, change it so it feels right. It has to harmonize with your instincts. Remember that affirmations are designed to inspire you to take positive action. If you don't get the right results, change your affirmation words, the sentences, and your strategy. Number seven, be patient with yourself. Don't expect overnight success. When you hit obstacles or delays, don't declare yourself a failure. It is easier to reach your goals with high self-esteem which comes from being kind and supportive of yourself. Please go to your workbook now and create your positive affirmation action plan.